<laughs> Have you seen how many catrums there are? There are like 80,000 catrums. I don't know if they're all like waiting. They just keep... They don't stop. Like the sea of catrums does not stop. Literally 50,000 of them. Yeah, hello! Hope that like is Mike. It sounds better, doesn't it? Jimmy here. Silverstone, GP, the big boy circuit. They've let us on it for some reason. I'm not really sure why. Brick car round... What round is it, Steve? Round five, there you go, thank you mate. Uh, two hour race at Silverstone GP. So not two races this time, just one two hour race. Today is test day. Isn't it lovely? Beautiful weather out here. Can't wait till tomorrow. I'm sure it's gonna be exactly the same. So, race day at Silverstone. It's currently just before 9 a.m. testing. Uh, our first practice of the day. Completely wet, of course. Very different from yesterday. We kind of knew it was going to be wet, but we didn't know when or how bad it would be. Uh, full wet conditions, 100%. Not as bad as Snetterton, which is a good thing, but still, you know, going to be a challenge. Jem is in the car right now. She's going to go out, sort of scope out the track for me, and then I'm going to go out in the last 10 minutes and get an idea of what to expect out there. Uh, I've had a lot of uh, tutelage from Gordy. He's been showing me the wet lines. We've done various trap walks throughout this weekend to get prepared for this. But uh, it's always a little bit scary <laughs> thinking you're going to go out there because it's not a slow circuit, this one. It's not slow at all. came back after warm-up I had I think one lap not even one lap um, before first I caught Jay in the other Praga lost a spray couldn't see where I was going and then straight after that red flag so no practice at all in the wet but the rain has stopped so maybe it won't matter so I was just thinking kind of how mad it is that we're you know we're here at Silverstone GP and I've not even really sort of acknowledged it that much because I think Steve put it a really good way earlier like it's gone from being like in awe of everything to now just being focused on trying to be quick and almost like the excitement doesn't go it's still there but you're still, it's just focusing to something else as opposed to just like sitting there and being absolutely blown away by everything but I will say the first time I came out of Luffield up here towards Cops I was like oh my god this is amazing I'm on the Silverstone and then by the time that forward sort of process I was like oh buddy I've got a break haven't I like, <laughs> this next corner up here or I'm gonna go off so yeah, it's been a, a pretty awesome year so far, even with the ups and downs. So I think a two hour race here is a really awesome way to sort of set the midpoint of the season, set the tone that we want to achieve for the rest of it. And uh, it's all just got better in terms of pace as we've gone on, even the results don't reflect that. So a bit of confidence. So qualifying time then for the two hour race and Jem opted to go out first to she had a bit more experience in the wet than I did. But the rain was holding off, which meant every lap the cars went around, the track was getting drier and drier. It wasn't quite dry enough though for the slick compound tyre, so we opted to stay on the intermediate slash wet compound. And it was up to me to try and put in our flying lap. But unfortunately due to intermittent radio, I had no idea where anyone else was on the circuit and we ended up catching traffic towards the end of the session. Felt the car moving around. Uh, <laughs> yeah. Lads, yeah. I could get comfortable with it. Now we're in a better place for the race. Yeah, yeah. We're only going to go forward in the race. Yeah. We've got a long tour race ahead of us. Chill out. <laughs> Chill out. How do you go in? Currently in prison for crimes against I don't know motorsport. It's going to say humanity, but motorsport's better. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, P7. Uh, frustrating because of my last lap really really fast run through cops and then down the maggots and then just Porsche nothing you can really do at that point the lap's already over really uh, even with the drying circuit to gain back a second is, is difficult and um, yeah but it was all right though. the car was moving around a lot the tires were getting really hot because there's just a dry line now so every straight I was trying to move on to the onto the wet stuff try and cool them down a bit but like going through like cops and stow you can feel the car just like floundering on the on the on the tire it just can't do it so it's a long race as you say but you always it's just, I just wanted to have that last lap because that would have been the fastest lap because you know dry and qualifying that's always going to be the quickest lap but uh i've just seen some blue sky for the first time today behind you steve how about look up there mate what do you reckon the dream's still on <laughs> so then race is about uh well about to start we've got about 
half an hour left before I have to get in the car. Caterham's going around now. Strategy, let's talk about that a little bit because it's a bit different, this being a two hour race. Usually the strategy is to get the slower driver in at the start, they do 20 minutes, probably a safety car, and then the field punches up the pro driver then races to the end. We've got a two hour race here and it's pretty much split down the middle. You have to drive a minimum of 40% of the race. Um, so we're gonna just split it down the middle as we are. I'm hoping that because between us we're actually a very similar speed that I can get a decent gap over some of the slower amateur drivers and then Jem can sort of bring it home at the end. I'm not sure that's going to end up looking like but that's what the plan we're going with. Also uh, it's worth knowing that we're in the Gen 5 Praga R1. Uh, the Gen 4 has a smaller fuel tank so they're sort of it's a bit cut and dry or uh, whether they're actually going to make the uh, one hour pit stop window. There might be two stops for them, so that might be an advantage for us. But we're starting P7. I've got Jay Morton on my outside. I know I'm quicker than Jay, so I've got to get by him as quick as I can. Then just try and settle into a rhythm, really. That's as much as I can do. But yeah, pumped up for it. It's going to be a good one. I've noticed that it's all fun and games in the garage until the tyres come out and it all gets very serious and as it should do we are at Silverstone for the two hour race the jewel in the crown of the brick car season and I was going to be starting one hour in the Praga R1 one of the most physically demanding circuits on the calendar of this thing so much downforce so much aero a lot of G and of course this car no power steering no abs nothing like that a proper physical experience i've been training every day up until this event to make sure i could be as fit as possible but as you leave that pit lane you wonder was it enough only one way to find out so then race start at silverstone and immediately we were both jumped me and the ron goodman car by this GTR so fast in a straight line nothing that Praga could do unfortunately to uh, avoid that uh, I settled in behind the other Praga that was jumped by the GTR but then looking to the sky you can see look big black cloud up there and whilst I managed to get by the GTR and the other Praga and started to put a little bit of a gap between us it wouldn't matter because suddenly the heavens opened along the back of the pit straight and the pit lane and all hell broke loose as everyone tried to decide which tyre was best to be on Whilst I wasn't convinced it was the best decision to change tyres so I could see rays of sun breaking through the clouds, I knew it was best to trust my team and their experience so I pitted in for the wet compound. As I was about to leave the pit lane I noticed that the rain had completely stopped and that the sun was shining. We had made the wrong choice. About 15 minutes later the track was completely dry and you can see me just desperately going right to the pit wall just to try and find any moisture to cool down these tyres that are on fire at this point as we go through cops you can see the car really lazy through there as the tyres almost run over themselves as we know go, go down to Magus and Beckett's one of the fastest parts of this course and you can see the commitment there is trying to keep the downforce up trying to keep the grip through the aero but as soon as that washes off the car starts becoming unstable the tyre grip transforms from aero to mechanical and you're just left with what's left of the tread on this uh, compound of tyres. We come down the hangar straight again just trying to find a bit of water out to the right there. Nothing there at this point. It's completely gone, completely dry. So I try and light up the car coming into stow. The braking point is quite similar actually to in the dry but the actual speed you carry into the corner is much much different i just can't quite carry that same speed and when i do the car understeers to the exit as you saw there coming down to the veil now you hear the car there a little bit of a judder as i try and slow the car down the tire running over itself it feels like as we come into the bottom half of the corner now coming down to the veil and onto the national pit straight and you can see just the car having to lift quite a lot as i get the car turned in now as you come to abbey this corner was probably the scariest corner on this wet compound of tire because usually you go through in fifth gear but you'll see all the little corrections i make as the rear of the car tries to overtake the front of the car there it is there's one there's two there's three 
it all happens so quickly it feels like a much bigger deal in the car i can tell you that and now we get into the loop and village and you can just see how the car does not want to respond to these slow corners at all the, the front tire is just completely shot at this point and i'm just just trying to drag this car around just trying to get the pit stop i'm on the radio at this point saying please bring me in just do the driver swap early that we're losing so much time losing about 10 seconds a lap on this compound attire but for whatever reason it couldn't be done we come down to brooklyn's now and again sort of similar lines in the dry but just not able to carry any speed look how much work i'm having to put into the wheel to try and keep the car somewhat straight coming now into luffield and you're going to see on the exit the car's pretty much already straightened up on exit i hit the gas and then bam almost off into the gravel there on the left as i try and wrestle the car but again on the radio saying please bring me in do all we have to we cannot be on this tire they're tearing themselves apart we need to change we will have to do a driver change if we change the slicks. Roger that, Roger. John, get me slicks. He's gonna, I'm going to box him. We'll do a driver change. It's too early to do the driver change. Well, that's what I'm telling you. Yeah, and basically, what he's got to do another 10 minutes. All you have to do is stay out. I got out of the car and I just felt a mixture of exhausted and frustrated and actually quite emotional because I knew that I'd been out there giving it absolutely everything and I know of course the times won't show that because I was lapping like nine eight seconds slower than the guys in front of me but I was trying my best to drag the most possible speed out of this car on the tires that were just completely ruined they were absolutely shot my hands were numb because of the vibrations in the wheel and I just wanted to try and catch my breath and breathe a little bit because I just it was one of those things where you just want to be left alone really those are the tires that rear right tire was just absolutely ruined I decided it was best to maybe just walk away for a bit catch a little bit of air and just clear my head before saying anything on camera so pretty guided honestly um, just bad tire call and I was ended up on wet tyres for about half an hour, I don't know, 35 minutes, 25, I don't know how long it was, but I still can't feel my hands, the vibration is so bad. Um, lost laps, lost time, the tyres, when they, I'd sorted them when they came in, ruined obviously, of course they're ruined, I'm driving, getting overtaken by GE3 cars, overtaken by uh, Porsche Cup cars, barely overtaken TCR cars. I'm just a bit gutted really, I don't know what else to say, I mean I was going through Abbey, which is the new T1, and I could barely turn the car in, every slow corner the car just didn't turn, and I just thought like, oh, I don't know, one of those things I guess, but I can't help but be just, yeah, All right, I don't know, it was, it was tough because it was raining, you know, I wouldn't want to have made the call, it was at a point where I was going down the straight and it was proper heavy rain, but it doesn't matter. Whilst I was frustrated, the car was still in the race and Jim was doing a great job of just getting the thing around the circuit in one piece. And here's actually an onboard of the car on the right tyres uh, going through Maggots and Beckett. You can see just how much more grip there is, how much more fun it is. And in the drive, I've got to say, driving this car around the circuit was absolutely phenomenal. It was such a good time. Um, just not so much on the other compound attire but it seemed that just driving around actually did well for us because whilst we were in seventh place when I pitted the car in to give it to Jem a couple of other cars fell off the circuit had problems there is the Frank car by the side of the circuit which means that in the end we were actually promoted up into fifth place so somehow despite all the issues we managed to match our second best result of the season so it was hard to get my brain around that but it just goes to show that in these endurance races the main thing you've got to focus on is just getting to the end over i think we ended up actually somehow in p5 uh sick for overall so a good recovery um but to be honest other cars just fell off and broke uh, we, we were lucky we didn't uh, we did sort of work out if we didn't have the pit stop uh we would have probably been on the podium but i think if you were if you 
pay that too much mind, you end up going a bit insane. So, um, one to learn from, I guess. Um, we just need better radios. This is something we've been trying to get. It is hard to get a motorsport radio because you're actually travelling, you know, far away on the circuit and uh, communication can be a bit tricky sometimes. But the reason why I came in is because the radio was bad. The reason why they didn't bring me in when I wanted to come in is because the radio was bad. So that. If we had that information, that would have helped. I was losing about 10 seconds of lap, I think, out there on the wet tyre. I was throwing it through the corners so much. You see the, the onboard, I'm just literally like, it looks like I'm just having a massive incident the entire time. And you've seen the wets when they came off, they're just ruined. But Jem did a really good job. Um, pass off for Jem. It's really hard going out there and knowing that you're sort of nowhere. So just consistently went round at decent times and P5, I guess. But hey. Next one's Brands Hatch Indy, small circuit, so maybe the radio will work better. <laughs> yeah, big thanks to everyone watching this. Again, a lot of you guys came out today. I didn't get to meet all of you, unfortunately, just because of um, how busy things have been. But it's been an awesome day in that regard. So thank you for your support as always. Take care. Have an awesome day. There's Goldie. <laughs>